G'day fellas and a welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map in the color blue, playing as the English. It's Vortex. And on the north side of the map, playing in the color pink as the Mongols. It's Beastie Cutie. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number three in this series. It's Golden Heights. Two villagers heading out towards the east side of the map. Khan going to be heading out there as well. Keep in mind, the prospect of an early dock coming in for the Mongols is low. That is until the enemy dock is down. At which point the spears are out and all of a sudden you've got yourself an absolutely great time. So keep that in mind. Beastie looking to try and do a bit of... A little bit of... Uh, how do you say? A little bit of uh, mind gaming over on this side now. Of course, for anybody who's playing along at home, you would have realized had you watched the last few videos what the current score is. But for those of you who haven't watched the previous videos and don't want to know who won the last games before I spoil them, please go back and watch those games right now. The first, they're going to be the last two games on the channel. Now that you've gone and done that, I'm going to assume that you have. Currently, the score is 2-0 in favor of Vortex. Vortex is up 2-0 in this series. It is a best of five. This is match point. If Vortex wins this game, Vortex goes on to the grand final and plays against his brother. It will be a rematch of the lower or the upper bracket grand final. And take a look what we've got here. Really smart move by Vortex already. Going for the wall in a round like this. And the fact that he goes for the wall, a solid wall like this, because the likelihood that Beastie brings a villager with him is incredibly high. So gets the wall in like this, guarantees that this dock stays up a little bit longer. Now remember, he needs to buy himself enough time that he can get up to a galley or a hulk or a demo ship, god forbid, and cancel out those spears. So that's what Beastie's going to be thinking about. He's going to be like, me, I'm going to make... Oh my god, he's making horsemen. I did not expect that. He's going to be looking for horsemen instead of spears. So it means he's going to have less siege out here as well. Uh, and you can see where he's rallied as well along the edge of the shoreline. That's all he cares about shutting down. So interesting opening already. I, I, I feel like Beastie is already on the back foot in this third game going up against Vortex here on the English. You've got such a great defensive opening. For anybody wondering why uh, the English are great on this map, it's because your villagers have got bows. So if your enemy looks to try and take uh, a water position, you're just going to be able to kill them with your villagers. That is that is the most common thing. And it's gotten to the point where we just see pl people not even looking to contest the water against the English just simply because they've got that power. But look at this, Beastie just going to be using his horsemen to secure a foothold on the water. Now, there's going to be a slight advantage towards Vortex early on in this game just simply because he's already got the fishing boats out. He's already got the dock up. He's bought himself an extra minute, an extra two minutes, maybe an extra three minutes almost, as this villager does finally make its way out towards this position on the east side of the map. Vortex, on the other hand, he's very happy. He is very happy right now. He's in the back of the limousine. He's got the ice cream out. He's speaking Chinese. He's having a great time. Look at this. He he's gathering up fish and firing his shot. Gather the fish. Fire the bow. Gather the fish. Fire the bow. Gather the fish. Fire the bow. You, you, for anybody who doesn't know where that's from, it, I, I'm like imitating pure ownage. Uh, it's like, get the supplies, drop the supplies. Get the supplies. That, that's an old school reference. I don't know if you're going to get that. Pure ownage is like from what, 2005, 2004, maybe? You guys remember Jeremy? Jeremy and FBS Doug. You know, th that's like the boom headshot. You know, I don't want to say it too loud because my family's asleep upstairs. You know what? I'm going to say it. Everybody stand back. Boom headshot. Sorry. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. I've probably just woken up my wife. Sorry, honey. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we got the age up about to come through from Vortex. Beautiful macro as per usual. Look at that. Crossing within a second of each other. Council Hall goes down immediately. And now, like, this is where it starts to get interesting, right? Because the reason why Beastie puts the dock down here is because even if his enemy looks to try and uh, contest him on water, he's just going to be able to say, that's fine, I'm just going to get the emplacement, and you're going to be in a whole world of hurt. He gets naval arrow slips, uh, slits rather, not slips. Uh, I mean, he could get n naval arrow slips as well if he wanted. Uh, I don't know what, what, what good they're going to be doing. 
Uh, but the thing is, that they're, they're going to be able to take out the fishing boats on, on the way back in. It does a hell of a lot of damage. Uh, and that's basically just going to cancel out Vortex's uh, early uh, fishing economy. And you can see he's only gone up to three fishing boats. Look at this fishing boat. He's just he's like a Willy Wagtail right now. He's going crazy on the way out there. That was amazing. Uh, uh, let's see if the next one does it as well. What was that all about? He, he couldn't decide which way he wanted to go. Apes are about to come through from Beastie. We'll watch out for that. Keep in mind, there is the option for trade. I don't think Beastie's... Oh, is Beastie the kind of, go to go, kind of guy to go for a trade? He's not. Will he wagtail? Will he wagtail? Will he wag? That is the question. No, he will not wag. Age up comes through. He breaks through, and you can see just how much time this Palisade Wall has broken. Had this been Palisade Wall, 20, 1,250, 1,750 on the dock. The dock's probably getting sieged down right now, 200. It's likely that this Hulk never comes out, but that wall has bought him the extra time that he's needed to get this dock up, to get the Hulk out. And you can see him actually spreading away. Look at this, spreading all of his horsemen so that in the event there is any potential threat of a, a uh, an explosive Dow, he's not going to have to worry about the, uh, the splash damage there. But we do see it's going to be the Hulk. And the Hulk is going to shut down this attack. He's going to be focusing down the villager straight away. That's the highest value target he doesn't really care about the military the villager though that is a, that is always going to be a concern and now going to be moving into a galley and slowly but steadily looking to focus down these cavalry units remember he's always got the option to come back here and put up another dock so even if you win this position it doesn't necessarily mean you win the game there was a villager that looked to get through that's two worker kills so far for beastie he manages to shut down this this side so very nicely done two two against one and now we've got a burning dock and that's all Beastie wants. A burning dock. That means we're on a timer now. Take a look at this Vortex. Realizing, hold on a minute. I've got an idea. What if I just leave my demo ship back here? But Beastie, he's on the naval arrow slits. He's going to need to go hard. He's going to need to go fast if he wants to take this out. Demo ship moving out. He's going to try and shut down the fishing, I suspect. Arrow slits comes through. Immediately looking to repel the Hulk. The power of the arrow slits about to be realized. Now focusing down that demo ship. He doesn't want the demo. The, the demo ship can actually do a lot of damage to the dock. I, I, I thought that what Vortex might have gone for was like a very heavy... Uh, that's a villager going down. That's number three going down right there. He tried to sneak it in on the bottom side. It was trying to get the repair off. Very, very nice attempt. But unfortunately does get spotted out. Beastie doing a great job just patrolling back and forth on this shoreline. But yeah, you, you can actually run in the demo ship if, if you've got enough of them and look to try and sack the... Uh, or, or look to try and take down the dock from your enemy. And that'd be, that'd be a pretty strong position, honestly. The main issue that you'd have is, is that you couldn't get back onto the water. And at this point, he's just going to look to try and out-heal the damage coming through. Bit of a counter-attack. Longbow's on the way through. Going to pass by the Uvu. At the same time, Horseman still just chilling out for the moment. And it is definitely a scramble right now. Keep in mind, this is match point. Beastie is on the edge of his seat. He's trying his best to play his little heart out. Hulk again going to be coming out. Or War Junk, rather. And now those longbows going to be working their magic on the Woodvilles. A couple of horsemen going to be just doing the run by. They say, nah, uh, yeah, okay, we'll get you. We'll, we'll tap you back. Villager does go down. It's three against three when it comes to the worker kills. Now, keep in mind, there are three fishing boats inside this dock. And what are these fishing boats doing moving up like this? Keep in mind, he's got access to the demo ship. He's trying to, he's trying to, fight, trying to take it down. Oh, the explosive... It gets in there. It only looks like it does one ring of damage. Insufficient wood coming through. And now we've got Explosive Dow going to be coming out from Beastie. He's going to be looking to chase down the Hulk. If he gets a solid connection here, he's going to be able to take it out. And he does indeed. And now Vortex is in a tough position because he doesn't have access to the dock. And Beastie somehow manages to gain a foothold on the water and clean up this entire position. There's nothing here left for him. And Beastie is going to have 100% control of the water. Double dock. Almost guaranteed victory at this point. How does Vortex possibly come back in? Of this game he's thinking about a second town center he's thinking about a second town center the problem that he's going to have is that beastie has got a hundred percent water advantage right now he's fought hard for it and he's fought well for it honestly i'm impressed the fact that he's able to do it and i can't help but feel it was only because of a, mis of a mistake made by vortex if vortex is able uh to use enough uh, uh, dows to take out the dock and get that burning as long or, or not burning but uh, take it out it might, he probably needed about three to do it. Then he gets off the water completely. And even if he's got one ship in the pond, Beastie can never retake the pond. Uh, at, at least not until he, he, he's up to castle. And it, it's kind of irrelevant at that point. But nice little wall comes in on the backside. 
Horseman going to be looking for a way through. Not going to be able to find it. Town center. He changes the spot. Originally going for this spot down here. Very, very bold position by Vortex. We've seen... We've seen two very bold town centers in this series, and that is going to be another interesting one. Let's check in on Beastie, though. Look at the score difference between these two. Now, normally, I, I would give you guys, like, a bit of a warning and be like, hey, guys, just remember, don't look at the scores. We're, we're talking about a Mongol. Uh, Mongol's score, it, it inflates because they unpack their building and they repack them and they get extra score from it. I got no idea what's going on right now, but it kind of looks like Beastie is a mile ahead. He's heading towards Castle Age. I don't know where the Vortex... Well, he's only got five villages on food, so he's not heading to Castle Age. Right now, Vortex needs a miracle. This is the thing, right? Like, I don't see a way that Vortex gets back into this game. I mean, in a perfect world, he's going to try his best to utilize the food that he's got here. He's got the gold on the front. He could possibly hit a Castle Age. The problem is the Knights, when they come in... He, the, the tempo that Beastie is going to have is going to be so great from this food economy or from this fishing economy and we can see right now just exactly what we're talking about it's essentially like three TC's imagine that right now Beastie sitting on three TC's that's what we're talking about it's a lot of resources and we start to see upgrades coming through is that a fishing upgrade? no it wasn't the fishing upgrade I thought it was I got excited for a second uh, but yeah horseman numbers looking really solid so Beastie goes up to castle gets knights Gets plus one ranged armor if he doesn't have it already. He doesn't have it already. Gets plus one ranged armor. And, and then just laughs at Vortex as Vortex tries to defend in the Feudal Age. The Knights are going to... The, the um, Yeah, the, the Lancers are eventually going to be able to overwhelm the Spears. Not that there are any out on the field, but there will be some shortly. There they come. Stepped out now coming through. Looks like he's going to be throwing it down on the gold. We'll need to move the TC away or just keep the Vills on this one side of the gold vein. And there's the second stable coming down. So it's going to be Lancers getting served up on a platter directly for Vortex to enjoy <laughs> and it's not the good type of enjoy it's it's the bad type uh so yeah bc doing a really good job though just keeping his enemy on his toes and i I've, I've got a feeling like good what is it so beastie ages up about 12 minutes 20 lancer takes 30 seconds to produce 35 seconds so that takes us to 13 minutes takes about 30 seconds to run across here how much stones he got in the bank enough for a double batch so you're talking three lancers game ends at 14 minutes and 12 seconds that's what i'm going with i'm calling it out now 14 minutes and 12 seconds let's see a little bit of a wall attempt on the front line here outpost already up here gonna be denying out this wood on the front line keep that in mind and now show me the double lancers double lancer click double lancer click 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 there we go. He, he clicked it. He clicked it on this stable. All right. Uh, change that 14 minutes and 12 seconds to 14 minutes and 21 seconds. Took us a little bit of a while to get that first Lancer in the queue, but don't worry. We got it in queue now. And now look at this. Horseman just going to be moving in, looking to try and tackle out some of these unprotected longbows. There are a few spear in there. They're going to be able to deal with it effectively. Uh, but those Lancers, they're going to be the real threat when they come on in. Uh, the other option he's got is that he can just look to throw down outposts everywhere, sprinkled in placements on the hills. It's going to be very difficult. And actually, a sprinkled emplacement on this hill might actually lock down this gold. And then you've got a real problem. How do you get gold? you got to come over here. Sprinkled emplacement again. Do we see Do we see Beastie moving out for that? If, if he moves out for that, that is a, a whole world of pain right there that Vortex is going to be in. Uvu gets depleted. All right, not long to go. He gets the rewall up on the south side, but a vill... Oh, never mind, it's a vill from the other side. Never mind. Never mind. I was getting ahead of myself. Looks like the Lancers have decided just to kind of chill out for the moment. Second set of cavalry coming in as well. He's going big with the cav. How many more do we see? And prayer tent going to be coming out. Double prayer tent coming out for Beastie. So nice. Nice way that he's playing so far. But just a very passive opening with these knights. Normally, I like to see people just ram the knights or lancers down the throat of the enemy as soon as they hit castle. But I think the fact that he's got the wall up, Vortex has bought himself a little bit of time. And he is looking for his own castle. He's got the council hall. So the prospect of crossbows are going to be decent for him here. Ten vills go inside the town center. Very careful to keep no le no more than ten vills out here. Every other vill has been rallied back towards this back... back uh, the, the, the back wood. There you go. Back wood. All right, Spear's moving out. Not going to find a way through. Ideally, he needs to bring a villager up to chop a hole through here. I think you'd, you'd have to go through two trees to do it. It definitely would be possible. Shaman's moving out, looking to pick up relics. Fishing economy from Beastie. 14 fishing boats. He's having an absolute beautiful time. Yeah, he can't get through that little corner. So a little bit of a... I don't know if I'd necessarily say a mistake or a misplay. Armor arrow did go off to no success. 
And Beastie, he's not able to close out the game. So there goes my prediction of 14 minutes and 20 seconds. And now Vortex has found him himself a way back into this game. Am I still worried? Not necessarily. I think Vortex on the three TCs is going to feel really good for him. Uh, the problem that he's going to have is th this timing attack from Beastie is going to be huge, right? Like, Beastie is going to be starting to set up outposts on this cliff face. It is going to be the King's Palace as well. And, like, you've got all three landmarks here, and they're all within range of this trench. So, I feel like the longer this game goes on, Beastie, he's still going quite heavy on cavalry, but I'd expect him to move into Spear Crossbow pretty soon. There's the crossbows coming through. Uh, so going to be moving into the... There's the crossbows. Uh, so going to be moving into the crossbows now. Uh, and then rallying them towards the front. We see the trench come down. We'll see the slow uh, construction of traction. Trebuchets. I suspect he's going to be looking for improved siege engineering. If he hasn't already, he has already got the improved siege engineering. So all, all the things are in play right now. I feel like Beastie's just playing it very safe. Uh, making sure he doesn't make any mistakes. He, he's in the lead in this game. He just wants to make sure he can close it out. So how, the question is, from the perspective of Vortex, how do you hold on? And I think there's actually one answer to this question. And I, wow, I can't believe I just saw that. Okay, this I, I know how Vortex beats Beastie. Vortex has to go Imperial. It's the only way he can do it. You go Imperial, and your Barkshire Palace outranges Beastie's Trebs. Not only that, but you get access to Springwood um, Roller Shutter Triggers that allow you to kill the enemy Siege. And now, you, of course, you lose access to the Wingard, which is the undisputed best landmark of the English. But at least you survive. I guess the next problem that you deal with is that your enemy is going for a Sacred Victory. So maybe you look to contest this Sacred Site as well. You're not going to be able to put keeps down, but maybe an outpost, maybe a couple more outposts. Is that the way that Vortex gets into this game? I think that that's an opportunity. I think that's an option, honestly, for him. The question is going to be whether he, 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 whether he recognizes it as well. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, 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 let me know in the comments below. I want to know what you think. Would was Is Fast Imperial... Because I, I don't know the outcome of this game. Remember, we're live right now. Is Fast Imperial actually a way for Vortex to have stayed in this game? Because as I said, I still think at this point in time, the win percentage for Beastie is like a 98% chance to win. Um... The questions... And th there's the outpost beginning along the edge. The, the, the question's going to be whether Vortex can find a way back into it. Now, he's scaling, right? Like, you've got one TC over on, on Beastie's side. Uh, there, there's no second TC added in because Beastie knows, like, hey, we've got to finish this game early. He's probably doing, you know, crazy stuff behind there. And by the same token, Vortex, he's like, I'm just going to mass spears. And it's like, th th these aren't going to really achieve much here. Take a look at this. Nine Shaman's going to be out on the map soon. Additional shamans moving out. If I'm if I'm Vortex, I'm probably even thinking about walling off this little section here. It's actually got some sheep just chilling. Spears moving out. He'll be able to neutralize that. Maganel number one's out. He could look to put on some pressure here. I wonder where the... So Beastie can actually see these villagers. Maganel could 100% fire down on this gold vein from here. And I, I feel like you could probably have the keep coming down right now. Like, I don't know what the exact timings are here. But, like, judging by the income per minute... It, two minutes and you're you're aging up right like i think that's fine i think that i think that's a reasonable call i reckon you could have gone fast imp here and you stay alive a little bit longer and remember you do also scale you've got the three tcs right so you don't die and you, ju you just got to pull every vill so you don't lose to the mangonels double mangonels now coming out from beastie so we're gonna miss but the wall does get up and that's what's important and now vortex is going to be really suffering here as the mangonel shots go down the field does a lot of damage and Vortex trying his best to hold on. We enter into the cinematic mode because Beastie decides it's time to fight and like a school kid cornered in a locker room, it is time to fight. Beastie trying his best to hold on. Or rather, Vortex doing his best to try and hold on. Beastie looking to finish this game. He's not even dealing with trebuchets. He's just going to move in. It's going to be the knight crossbow combo. I love to see it going up against spear, longbow. Bit of a feudal age composition, if you will. Mangadel's firing off doing a little bit of hold ground stuff and now going to be losing the gold, going to be losing the villagers on the on the farms and we see the at the same time the knights on the backside. Huge amounts of potential back here. He's going to be able to split this open at the same time looking to try and find a, a nice little position on the inside of these walls, make himself a bit more insulated. How do you even deal with these sprinkles at the moment? You need a siege workshop. But obviously there's no siege workshop or at least not on that top side of the base. Nothing on the bottom side either. He can't really look to engage. If he engages on the mangadels, it's going to be so damn difficult. 
And now Village is going to get pulled. He's only pulling Villagers from the farms over on the east side. It's an all or nothing play right now from Vortex. Nice little dodge comes in. He's looking to pick off the spear, or, or, off the crossbows on the back. Remember, there's no armored units here. Mangonel 1 almost going to be going down. Village is going to get sacrificed. Remember, he's got the extra TCs. He doesn't really care if he loses all these vills. It's okay. He's only thrown away five, six vills. That's only, that's only a couple minutes of production. Not a big deal. And it looks like he's going to repel him. What are the odds right now? Beastie Cutie was not playing the percentages. He was not playing the percentages here. He could have sat up on his high little, on his ridge line with his trebuchets, working down the mass of his enemy, working down the, the uh, council hall, working down the landmarks, but didn't opt for it. Instead, we saw villagers get pulled with great success. Vortex only three villagers ahead of Beastie, but he's scaling. Remember that, he's scaling right now. It's the one town center against three. That's the difference. This is not good for Beastie. Vortex is now up military pop and he's going for additional mangonels. I can't help but feel like this is the all-in play. Surely the best thing to do right now is throw some sprinkled, uh, throw outposts down here, get those sprinkled emplacements up, work on the trebuchets. Your crossbow mass sits safely behind this wall. Your enemy can't delete the wall because you've got units next to it. You you use this as a, a nice little funnel point, choke point. He's got to come around the edge like this. Sprinkled emplacement's going to help. And you just go crossbow spear. It seems all so easy when Drongo says it, doesn't it? You know, I, I feel like a YouTube commenter. Sorry, guys. I know that you guys are all YouTube commenters, but it's like, uh, I don't see why it just didn't do this. And it's like, uh, like uh, I remember I, I remember this one comment I read just like, I, I must have been today. Oh, it cracked me up. It was so confidently incorrect. I loved it, right? I feel like every YouTube comment that's, not every YouTube comment, but there, there is, you know, at least 10% of comments on YouTube videos are confidently incorrect. And I love that. I love that. And I feel like I, I am a beacon of confidently incorrect as I sit here on my high horse from the safety of my casting chair. Nothing can go wrong up here, baby. Don't worry about that. So he's going to be moving into trebuchets. This is definitely the right call here. The question is like, how do you survive out the trebuchets? Because they're going to slowly work down these two landmarks once you lose them. Then it's onto the King's Palace. I don't know whether BC's got line of sight on the King's Palace and he knows the exact positioning of it. But I'm sure he could suspect it is, uh, it's, it's close by. The main thing here is just going to be protection from the sprinkled emplacements, right? The, these sprinkled emplacements offer so much insulation. The m one key difference is it is a bit more expensive now to get your sprinkled emplacements and, and the stone. Uh, or your, yeah, it just, it costs more. So you've got to be focusing 100% of your stone on sprinkled emplacements now. Landmark's getting worked down though. Doing the right thing. Needs to be moving into crossbow spear. But I mean, you probably don't need to make spear here. Yeah, you, you don't need to make spear here, but you do need a front line. I don't know, maybe maybe men at arms is the right call then. He could probably just move into mass crossbow. He, uh, I, no, never mind. So it's gonna be yeah, a huge amount of archer, and now beginning to move around the edge of the map, edge of the walls. Actually, I don't remember. I know you can't delete stone walls when your enemy's nearby. You might be able to delete palisade walls when your enemy's nearby. Because I, I remember doing it. Like, I would go to attack my enemy and I'd delete all the walls. I'd be like, surprise. Surprise, motherfucker. Please don't demonetize me, YouTube. There, there we go. Okay, so you can delete the walls. And he says, yo, what's up? Surprise, motherfucker. It's coming through. Longbow's on the south side. He's looking to break through. He's up 30 military population. The engagement is going to get forced. On the sa at the same time, the Mangadel's on the back. He's got Springles here to help support, but there's absolutely no siege coming out. So wasted resources. Mangadel's firing off a deep shot off the top rope. Not going to be able to hit. Spearman going to be looking to try and chase it back at the same time. Beastie looking with a solid mass of crossbows and archers there. Mangadel's continuing to take really good shots off. It is looking like the, he's throwing... What, I'm trying to think of the meme right now. The, the, the Off the top of the cage. I can't, I can't remember it. I can't remember it. But ho, somehow, some way, Vortex has got indestructible longbows. We see this every English game. The, the longbows find a way to dodge the projectiles of these units. And we hear... I think it was all sacred sites getting captured right then. Trebuchet is still going to be firing down on the buildings below. And Beastie's mass holds. The siege holds. The longbows, they looked like they were bulletproof, but Beastie manages to pull out the victory. Well played by Beastie, but my questions remain unanswered. Fellas, don't let your questions remain unanswered. The next game is going to be coming up after this. We see an English defeat. Let's take a little bit of a look at what we've got here. Military count, it was a slow build up. Economic count. I tell you what, that, that was a tough game.
It could have gone either way. I got a little bit worried there when Vortex pushed out. I'm like, hold on a minute. I want to see a best of five go the length of the length of the the, the day. Anyway, fellas, I won't I won't leave it to you any longer. I'll catch you guys in the next one. 15 GMT Saturday, Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Make sure you come watch live on AGC TV. It's Golden League 2.